Chef Kevin. Fresh from the farmer's market. Hell's the target. Getting fresh. Chef Kevin. Organic and fresh. Beats the rest. Welcome to Getting Fresh with Chef Kevin. Today we have a special guest, Ms. Dominique. She's a nutritionist counselor from Falls Church and she holds a MS degree in clinical nutrition and she's been helping people with all kinds of issues. And welcome. Thank you, Kevin. It is really a pleasure to be here because Christmas is my favorite holiday. Can we just talk briefly about what you do really quick? As, a, as you have just said, I've been uh, helping people with um, all kinds of health problems since 2007 mm -hmm. from diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which is one of my specialties actually. Right. Uh, people with autoimmune disease, uh, people with uh, depression, uh, weight loss, I mean, you name it. Even we, we, I even work sometimes with children. Um, so it's a variety of things and it is really amazing to see how eating fresh yes. and eating real food, uh, what it can do to your body but also to your mood, to your sleep right. pattern, to your well-being and I'm so glad you have me um, on the show because I think we need to tell people we do. You know, what eating fresh food really can do, it is the best medicine there is. It is. And I feel better myself just by eating, getting fresh, and also eating um, things, getting away from the holiday foods that we typically have. Yeah, so processed gonna, food. Processed foods. So what we're going to do, we're going to try some new recipes for yep. the holiday. Mm -hmm. Our first recipe we're going to talk about, but the ones I was really excited to do with you was the eggnog. Yes. <laughs> but it's not really eggnog, is it? Oh, uh, well, it is uh, eggnog with getting fresh twist. <laughs> <laughs> what is the getting fresh twist? <laughs> we are trying to remove all the bad things from your food mm -hmm. and give you a version that tastes as good as your old favorite, as the one that your grandma made, mm -hmm. but it's also healthy and it's going to do things inside you that'll make you a healthier, younger person. How is that? <laughs> I enjoy, I'll enjoy that. Then we have the uh, sweet potato uh, kale casserole. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, latkes. Mm -hmm. uh, latkes, it's in honor of my Jewish friends. I'm sure your Jewish friends too and yes. our Jewish friends who are uh, watching us today. Uh, we didn't want anybody to be left out of, uh, of you know, during this holiday. Everyone is going to have a little something. And if your family is like mine, it's the United Nations. You have everybody, nationalities, religion, mm -hmm. uh, different diets. So with the recipes we have prepared, uh, you can have anyone at your table, regardless of religion, diet preference, food allergies, uh, vegan, vegetarian. These recipes will accommodate everyone. So this holiday season, no fights. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to Getting Fresh. We're gonna start with our eggnog and we're gonna, we have all our ingredients we're gonna talk about and then we're just gonna mix it right up. Well, I have to ask, because I grew up in France, what's eggnog exactly? Because it's, it's creaming, it's thick, it's a liquid, you can eat it as a dessert, it's a drink. When do you serve it when your guests arrive as a dessert? Or what do you do with it? Eggnog, you, you serve it the same time you would open up your bottle of wine in France. You know, the same oh. time, as soon as you walk in, you should have that ready. It okay, well, then let's not wait. I'm yeah. thrilled. Because <laughs> gra Grandma wouldn't let you come in the house unless the eggnog was ready. Oh, bless her. <laughs> so. Okay, um, so we have our dry ingredients, mm -hmm. and we're going to add about um, half a cup of sugar. And this is actually coconut sugar. It looks dark. It smells really nice. That smells great. Yeah, what did you don't get need that? it. <laughs> Where do you, you buy can, coconut sugar? You can get this in any uh, health food store. Okay. So it's readily available and it's becoming more and more common. All right, we're going okay. to do and sugar. Then, yeah, two teaspoons of vanilla. I have good dexterity. That's good, all right. <laughs> and now we can add the milks. This is our and that's soy milk, mm -hmm. but you can also use um, uh, rice milk, you can use water, um, any uh, white liquid uh, will The coconut do. milk? 
and that's coconut milk. Uh, coconut milk, you don't want to use coconut juice. Lots of people make that mistake. It's coconut milk, you buy that in the can. Mm -hmm. It's pretty thick and creamy and it gives the it gives us the thickness of eggnog. Yes, yes. Okay, the water to thin it out a little bit. All right. And now we let the blender do the work. Okay. When do we add the rum? Uh, oh, we, you forgot the rum. Oh. You forgot the rum. That's the best part. How much do we add to that? Uh, we add a quarter cup of rum. Okay, we, just a quarter cup? What, how much does your grandma add? Usually, she usually, we usually have not just rum, we have brandy. Brandy and rum? Yes. Can you walk after drinking this? Oh, I know. Then she can serve anything she wants for dinner. And guess what? I have Good. A, I have Go, the brandy grandma. right here. Oh my God, I don't know if I'm gonna drink this. So we'll just put a little Kevin. brandy in there. You are, you are ruining my... And then yeah, we have the wonderful rum here. So here we go. Okay, so we blended it for two minutes. Yeah, about two minutes. All right, it smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's uh, eggnog façon Kevin. All right, so we're gonna mm -hmm. use our pitcher here. Yeah, let me hold the knife for you. So you want to taste now? Oh, we must. So what do you say in your house when you drink? Cheers. Cheers. We say, à votre santé, la chaya. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that great? Right. Okay, welcome back to Getting Fresh with Chef Kevin. And Dominique? Yes, we're back. Um, now this time, Kevin, we're going to make the sweet potato casserole. Okay. This is a it's not a traditional uh, Christmas uh, dish, but it fits in that tradition because it has sweet potatoes, it's got a cheese-like sauce, um, and, and it's a really easy dish to prepare. It's also high in protein, uh, it's high in fiber. It, it, this dish really it's like a vitamin pill, it has everything. It's got vitamin A, it's got vitamin C, uh, lots and lots of fiber. So uh, the whole family will enjoy this And recipe. it's really easy to make. It it's is, really yeah. It's really easy to make, okay. So the first thing I, I wanted to, um, to show our uh, viewers is how to wash kale. With anything leafy, you wanna submerge it in water and then you wanna massage it a little bit. And then what you do, you take your herbs or your leafy greens and then you look at the bowl. If your bowl is clean, like here, we, we are lucky we have clean kale. Yeah. If your bowl is clean and you don't see any dirt or um, any uh, sand, then it's ready to go. Otherwise so, we just rinse it again? Otherwise we rinse it again until we get clear water. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, we're just gonna cube the sweet potato. Um, small dice or medium dice. Yeah, you can make this in big chunks. You can make it in, in small chunks like Kevin is, do okay. is doing. There is really no, uh, no rule. It depends on your family, especially if you're dealing with children. If you cut it small, it's less intimidating and they're more likely to eat. And then we're just gonna steam it. And then we steam it. I see you already have some here. Okay, yeah. we'll just so steam it. We steam that. How long will we steam that? Well, with sweet potatoes, depending on the size, uh, on how you cut them, uh, two to three minutes, you want them soft, but not overcooked. You don't want them mushy, because remember, you're gonna, you're gonna go back in the oven. Okay. So, I see you started the skillet mm -hmm. without telling me. It's a little warm. You have to tell me everything. Well, you ever seen one of these before? I know, I'm from Versailles. I'm just a peasant girl. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna... Just gonna make it a little bite size, a uh, little small pieces, so it cooks a little faster, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I prefer my chef's knives. The, um, the cleaver, I find it a little intimidating. And I think for women, a smaller knife works better. Okay. That's what I've seen when I, when I teach um, my clients, they tend to like the, the smaller knives better. Um, I distracted you. You did. I'm good at that. You are. Okay, so we have the kale. And are we? You yeah. think that's enough? 
I think that's plenty for this okay. recipe. Yes, this is going to be our cheese-like sauce. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, you can mix macadamia nuts, but they have to be raw. You cannot use toasted ones. They are very hard to find. But if you're like me, today I couldn't find macadamia nuts. Would, okay. So what we do is we use uh, just cashews and we add fresh lemon juice. I squeezed this earlier when okay. you were, while you were not looking. All right. And we also are going to use a nutritional yeast. Uh, this is pretty well known among vegans. They use that a lot to replace uh, Parmesan cheese. Say that again, it's what? Nutritional, nutritional yeast. yeast. Okay. It is also called uh, brewer's, yeast. brewer's yeast. It's what's left after you make beer. So, and it tastes really good. You want okay. to taste some? No thanks. I didn't think so. No. <laughs> All right, they got the saute. These are just about done. Yeah. So can we go ahead and... Now we're, we can blend this, but first I'm going to strain them. So these go in. Okay. All right. And we are going to add, so you, you, the uh, nutritional yeast should go in first. If you put it on top, it's gonna fly all over the place. So I'm gonna put it down after the cashews. You can also put it before the cashews. And then we put water on top. And then we add our lemon juice. And then we blend. It's really that simple. Ready? All right, let's go. Okay. So we always start on low, and mm -hmm. then we go to high. So we finished blending it. How long did you blend it for? Uh, about mi one to two minutes. Okay. Uh, the, the rule of thumb is you blend until uh, it's really smooth. Can you see? It's really smooth. I didn't say you could taste. Mm. And um, so our cheese sauce is ready. I'll take that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the sweet potatoes are, they mm -hmm. should be done. All right. Okay. And then we have our onions. Mm-hmm. We have a little oil. Yeah. All right. All right. This should be hot and ready. Yeah. This is hot. So the thing I wanted, I wanted to, to tell um, our viewers is when you are saute, sauteing onions, uh, you want to hit the skillet first, then hit the oil. This way the vegetables won't stick to, right chef? Won't That's stick right. to the pan. So I can eyeball this, but if you if you can't, then one Couple, tablespoon. One tablespoon? Yeah, one yeah. tablespoon. All right. I, I never use more than one tablespoon because it's not necessary, especially with people who are trying to lose weight or people who uh, have type 2 diabetes. You don't want any fat, so we use as little as possible. And as you will see, one tablespoon is plenty. There you go. Okay, and now we hit the oil. We kind of move it around, and this way it hits a little faster, but it doesn't take that long to heat. And then we. So, do you know what sauteing means in French? No. Saute. What is saute? Saute means to jump. To jump. And when uh, when I'm teaching these classes, people do this to the to the onions. I'm like, I'm, unless you're trying to burn them, I don't know what you're trying to do. Uh, so you have to move them quickly so they are jumping in the pan. That's what, where the word sautéing came from. Now, I've, what I learned is the sauté technique is just to, to flip. And that is to make them jump. That makes them jump. Uh, we, if you try that with the onions, you will not end up with lots of food. Ready? Go for it. Make them jump. <laughs> Well, you make them jump. And then you can hear that. You can also hear that sound too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can hear them sizzle. Uh, salt and pepper. Can you yes. Use? So I'm gonna add that for you. Now, Kevin, one thing we have in common is we both like lots of salt. Yeah. Just enough. <laughs> and right? um, and it's interesting because I've been you know doing this for eight years now, and I work with people who have high blood pressure. And even when I add salt or tamari or soy sauce to the food, at the end of the program, the blood pressure goes down. Because high blood pressure does not really come from salt. Where does it come from? Well, it, it's um, there was I was stress. always told it was salt, salt, yeah. salt, salt. Once you have high blood pressure, then you have to slow down on the salt. Okay. Um, but, it, but salt doesn't cause it. What causes the uh, high blood pressure is the clogged arteries, uh, being overweight uh, and also uh, stress. Stress is a major cause of high blood pressure. Yeah, limit your stress, always. Yeah, if you can. 
Now, I've never seen you excited. You, you don't get stressed, do you? No, never. <laughs> Not when anybody's looking. No, I do get a little stressed. I do, I do work in the kitchen, so there are some stressful times, but we try to reduce it by yeah. being prepared. Yeah. That's, how, that's how you just don't, just, in, just about any, any job, if you're prepared for it. Yeah. Um, well, you can be prepared, but it's the other people around you. You prepare them too. If you can. It depends on the job. <laughs> it depends on the chef. Ah, absolutely. In the kitchen. Well, so. also, chef is also French word. You know what that means? What does that mean? Huh? The boss. You're, really? Yeah, so you're the boss. <laughs> now, I was taught to saute yeah. and flip um, and make them way. jump, right? Yeah. But not everybody can do that. Kevin, you're a chef. Most of us are just humble cooks. But this recipe, you're right, but this recipe is really easy. It doesn't take um, a chef to actually do this. It just yes, takes it a, doesn't. It takes a cook just to have everything ready, follow mm -hmm. the recipe. Yeah. And, and, um, and our recipes are, are really simple, as you, you will see uh, when you look at the recipe. There aren't that many ingredients, and it's very simple. Close? I th yeah, I think we're ready to add the kale. All right. And while you're stirring the kale, I will add the black pepper. I also make lots of black pepper. Um, I did a recipe for my um, family in France, mm -hmm. and I put in black pepper like I do for myself, and my ne little niece and nephew couldn't eat it because it was spicy. Too much? <laughs> yeah. They don't eat anything, not even, you know, black pepper. They don't eat spicy at all. Well, my daughter is here on set, and she likes black pepper, doesn't she? Yeah, she has a very developed salad. I met your daughter. She's yeah. fresh. Now, that is really a fabulous idea. Always involve uh, children in the kitchen. That's how they learn to cook. That's how they uh, learn about ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a great bonding experience. Uh, my, um, my fondest memories uh, with my grandmother are of us cooking. Sweet potato? So we're just, um, we're just welting the kale. Uh, we don't have to cook it because, you know, kale doesn't need to cook. It's a leaf, uh, it's pretty tender. It smells so great. It does. So you saute it a few minutes, you mix it with the hot onions. It's really one or two minutes is, is fine. And that's it, it's ready. All right. You can turn everything off. Okay. Now, uh, we are going to add in the sweet potatoes. Now the sweet potatoes are already steamed, they don't need to cook. We just we are just mixing these ingredients. So let me give that a stir. Alright, I'll get the bowl. Yeah. Okay. Alright, here we go. So now we are going to add the cheese sauce. And it's pretty difficult, it's not difficult to pour. Um, and we can just get, get the, the rest, rest with that. I'll get the rest of that one. You want to use a spatula? He will not take advice from a woman. <laughs> Is that it? No, no, no. I'll, I'll use this one. All right. It's a little easier to get down at the bottom. Ah. The wooden. All right. So now we mix this. So that's all the ingredients. The sweet potato, the kale, mm -hmm. salt and pepper, and the onions. The onions. That's it. It's And that's our cheese sauce. Mm-hmm. Cashew sauce. All right. So we mix this up. We put it into um, a baking dish, oven baking dish, your, your casserole dish. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to go in the casserole and then we bake this at 350 for 20 minutes. Welcome back to Getting Fresh with Chef Kevin and Dominique. Yeah. Uh, so what are you going to make now? We're going to make the latkes. Right. I'm, uh, for Hanukkah because yeah. it's a very important holiday and I think uh, latkes are a traditional dish uh, during Hanukkah. So well, you, can eat, you can do two, two different things. You can either um, shred them, mm -hmm. dice them, but you still have to have them cooked. 
right. somewhat. To, to soften them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just uh, dice these. Mm -hmm. All right. And so you dice them. So if you don't have a shredder, this is the method to use. All right. That's good. Now, I had uh, latkes at a friend's house. I have to tell you, they are absolutely delicious. But again, I, I love potatoes. I can't even eat them, eat them for breakfast, <laughs> dessert. <laughs> I love potatoes. And these are just the red potatoes. Could I use any other type of potato with this? Uh, you can use Idaho potato, um, but you have to be careful how to cook them because they are more um, powdery and mealy they tend to um, get really creamy. Okay. So these will hold shape. So there are uh, several, many, many varieties of potatoes. And uh, here um, in this area, we don't use that, that many of them. Um, and each potato has its own use. All right. So we're just going to saute these. Mm -hmm. We have our potatoes. So I'm going to add the oil for you again. Mm-hmm. Our leeks. Yeah. And leeks are we don't take very long to cook. So we add those about a tablespoon. Uh, always a tablespoon, not more than that. Uh, so the, uh, the leeks will go at the end. So we start with uh, the onions. the onions for, I don't know, a minute or so until they're translucent. And then we will add the potatoes. We I think will, we need all these? Uh, not all, this is a lot. All right. And we're going to do these in batches. Yeah, you know, if you have to. And we're going to add the sauce here. And now we're going to saute the potatoes just to get them soft. So it's enough for us to make these little patties. And the getting fresh twist for this recipe is of course the leeks. Yeah, the leeks. In the traditional Lusky's recipes, there are no leeks. Um, and leeks are really a marvelous vegetable. It's a little neglected. I think people don't know um, about them. Uh, lots of times when I give a recipe to someone and I say we need leeks, they go to the grocery store, they can't <laughs> find them, they ask the clerk because has never heard of leeks, and then they are ignored in, in some corners. So um, it's helpful to know what they are and what you're looking for when you go to a grocery store. I'm going to reduce the heat here a little bit. All right. um, but they are wonderful vegetables because they are, just, they are the same family as onion and garlic. Mm -hmm. And they are rich in selenium. Uh, they have sulfur, which is really good uh, for, um, for, for health in, in general. Uh, and selenium is a very powerful antioxidant that actually helps to reduce the risk of cancer. Um, so eat leaves, uh, leaves are good for you. Okay, right. so now our potatoes are getting soft. And they don't take long when they are grated like this. They don't take very long. A minute or two, and now I'm going to add the leeks. Okay, they're right. nice. You get, um, you know, the potatoes and the onions are just white, great. so we add a little color there. Um, well, I lived in Kansas. We had potatoes, potatoes, potatoes for lots yeah? of meal, lots of meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, lucky you! But we stored them uh, in the cellar, so we had potatoes for, you know, in no, in December. Oh, they're, so they're fresh, they're yeah. locally grown. Mm -hmm. That is the best way to eat. Uh, what I grew up in, um, in, uh, in the suburbs of Versailles, mm -hmm. so our potatoes came from grocery store. From the grocery okay. store, okay. Yeah, I didn't have fresh potatoes until much later when I had a garden and I was able to grow my own. Okay, I think this is ready. Okay. So now we turn this off and we are going to pour them in a mixing bowl. Okay. 
Okay, I'll take that. You can... All right. Uh, now that we have our potatoes and leeks and onion ready, we are going to add flax seed. Now, flax seeds are a wonderful seed. The, the, here they are grounded. Uh, they are rich in protein, mm -hmm. omega-3 fatty acids, but also lignin. Lignin is a type of fiber uh, that is really good for reducing cholesterol, uh, and it's a wonderful um, uh, fiber to have in your diet and it's um, not that common actually right. flax seeds are one of the you can find those in any, any grocery store you can yeah. find them in yeah. any grocery store yeah and you see it it's pretty uh, viscous kind of like an egg and we add that as a binder and then we are going to add tapioca so if you're if you're gluten free this is fine and here I also have a little bit of garlic powder and salt and we are going to add that and you will see, it will come together as it go. You can, um, I like them um, baked, but you can also fry them. And you make little patties, just like that. And we are going to put these on a cookie sheet. And we're going to bake that. So, If you want to fry them, you put a little bit of oil in, in, a, in, a, in a fryer, in a, in a pan, not a fryer, and you cook them two minutes on each side. And they're ready. Now, what else would you serve with this? Is there any garnish? Any? Well, traditionally, uh, latkes are served with applesauce uh, or sour cream. All right, how long will we bake these? Uh, they bake for about 20 minutes. Because as you can see, uh, 350. A they are already cooked. They just need to come together. We need to allow the fl the flavors uh, to bind and just stick together. There we okay. go, and they go in the oven. All right. So there we have our latkes. One taste. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back for getting fresh with Chef Kevin. We hope you like these recipes and you give them a try for this holiday season. If you have any questions, just email us at info at gettingfresh.org or you can visit my blog, blog.gizania.com. Thank you very much for joining us. This was fun. This was lots of fun. Right, Merry, happy Christmas. Happy holidays.